Hey guys, this is Todd Farmer with Affiliate Summit, and as you should know, we have our AFSTAT 2013 report available at AFSTAT.com. And inside that report, you will see over 1,600 affiliate marketers have answered a number of survey questions. And what we've decided to do is create an AFSTAT Insight, where we have experts who are going to join us and give us their insights, commentary, and perspective on the AFSTAT 2013 report. Joining me here today is Adrian Bliss from Skimlinks. Hey there, how are you? Hi Todd, good. Thanks for having me on. I'm so glad you could join us. So thank you very much for joining us for our AFSTAT Insight series. And I wanted to just kind of get some of your thoughts on the AFSTAT 2013 report. And uh, like, was there anything in particular that really stood out from you because, or stood out in your perspective with your role at Skimlinks, where you're the head of communications? I'm sorry, I didn't actually fully introduce you there. It's okay. Um, yeah. What are some of your thoughts? Uh, just uh, what kind of jumps out at you? Uh, is there any particular slide that you'd like to kind of run through? Yeah. So in particular, um, we were really intrigued by the, the slide where you talk about how you typically drive traffic to your website. And, you know, as you know, in affiliate marketing, that is kind of the question. And it's, it's really what we seek to do at Skimlinks is reward uh, publishers for creating purchase intent because we believe that they are the ones that really drive awareness about brands and products. Um, you know, as you know, in affiliate marketing, we kind of have those three key categories for all the different channels uh, that drive traffic. On one hand, you have the awareness channel, which is editorial sites and blogs and forums, social networking sites. You also have the consideration channel, which kind of usually is more of a navigational tool for uh, online users. And those are things like banner ads and retargeting. And then finally, you have the purchase channel, which is typically dominated by coupon sites and also things like search engine optimization and just kind of like, you know, the channels that really seal the deal and get uh, users to actually make a purchase. What we found was actually really similar to what you have here, actually, which is that, you know, content sites like social networks and blogs um, and then also other editorial websites and forums are really good at driving awareness and because the awareness has been raised through these content sites that actually is what enables these uh, the two other channels the consideration and purchase channels to have any kind of effect because if you as the user were not aware of say uh, a particular brand you would ignore the retargeted ad or you would ignore a typical banner ad. As we all know, they have low click-through rates of about 0.2%. Um, they wouldn't have any effect at all. So we think the awareness channel should really get a lot of the reward for affiliate marketing. Um, and in the research that we conducted, we actually found, in addition to that, we found that um, when a content site, especially when they're towards the beginning of the purchase journey of a particular on online user, 55% uh, of those customers that are driven from the content site eventually and make their way to a merchant site and make a purchase, 55% of those customers are new customers. And this is a really big statistic um, and something that we think would be eye-opening for most um, advertisers because that's kind of the holy grail is getting those new customers. And they're usually the most costly to acquire. Um, in contrast, looked at kind of the average of all other channels um, and how often they drive new customers. And it was only, it was a much lower percentage. It was about 24% of those uh, customers brought in by the entirety of the of the ClickPath uh, channel system were, were new customers. So we were really impressed by that. And I thought it was also really interesting that search engine optimization was so high because we considered that towards the end of the purchase funnel where awareness has already been raised and you know SEO wouldn't really come into play had the awareness not not yet been raised by the content site. Gotcha, right. And again, so you're saying uh, in your experience the content sites have resulted in 55% of those customers acquired by the merchant are brand new customers? It, they are new customers in the cases where um, the content site was the first click in the purchase funnel. Okay. And so that just means that and what was also interesting actually about that was we found that when when a content site was in the beginning of the click path, the intent to purchase seemed to increase over time up to a period of three days. I believe after an hour you had a nine percent conversion rate. After a day you had I think sixteen percent and after three days you had a thirty one percent chance of, of making a purchase. So it was interesting because they really plant the seed firmly in the minds of uh, the reader, the user, 
to make the purchase. And then what happens is, you know, they, they inform themselves about a product or a brand through a review site, or they go to another website or they get retargeted. You know, there's kind of a whole sort of flaneur kind of um, mentality where you, you kind of have this sort of fragmented experience online, but you're still very much driven by the content site to make a purchase, um, even if after a period of three days. Gotcha. Yeah, excellent. And so then your, your findings are consistent with ours with regard to the, the general traffic sources that our affiliates are finding here. And, and you work with a number of publishers as well. So Exactly. Yeah, we have we have publishers in the the six figures. So we we actually we work with a lot of publishers across a variety of different verticals. Everything from fashion to sports to mothering, parenting, babies. We kind of run the entire gamut of uh, publisher types that we work with. I've actually contemplated becoming a fashion publisher. I mean, look at my fashion, don't you think? Well, I'm, I can see why. <laughs> I'm all up on that. You should you should sign. Up for this, we'll help you. We'll help you make more money. <laughs> okay, can you uh, maybe uh, deliver me some actual content? Because I know nothing, nothing about fashion. Um, no. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what what I know. I, I'm I'm into the fashion myself, although you can't tell from today's outfit. But I will absolutely inform you. <laughs> All right, I'll hold you to it. We're on recording, you know. Excellent. <laughs> um, let me see. So, anything else here? Any other slides that you wanted to bring up, or any topics you, you thought about here? As long as I've got you, I thought I wanted to be sure. I know, as long as I'm here. Yeah, yeah. no, that was the one really stood out to me the most. Okay. Um, and I, I think the research that you have here is really valuable just in terms of the way that you segment the audience and you're able to kind of see who is really participating at a very granular level in, in affiliate marketing, who's benefiting. Um, I think this is a fantastic presentation that is useful for anyone wanting to get more acquainted with affiliate marketing. Well, thank you very much, Adrian. Bless, bless from Skim Links. Really appreciate your time and your insights and commentary for our FSTED Insights. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks so much. And if you'd like to look at uh, the FSTED report yourself, go take a look at FSTED.com. And feel free to utilize any of the graphics or data in there. Just be sure to um, give us a little attribution over to FSTED.com. Thanks again, Adrian. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye, Todd.